Okay, so let's have a look at the EDGECAST GCSE Foundation Paper for November 2020. Okay, so question one, 30 times 20. So three times two is six, then I times it by 10 and by 10 again to get 600. 96 is going to be divided by four. So I'm going to use bus stop, then I've got four on the outside of a bus stop and 96 inside. Four goes into nine two times, four times two is eight. So I have one left over, which I carry across. And now four goes into 16, four times. So my answer is 24. 3% as a decimal. So to turn a percent into a decimal, I'm going to divide by 100. 3 divided by 100, I'm going to move the decimal point 1 two places to the left, so I'm going to get 0 0.03. I've then been given 3 over 20, 0 0.35, minus 0 0.3, 1 quarter, and 0 0.031. And I need to use the values in the box to complete the following statement. 3 tenths is less than one of these. So some of these are fractions, some of these are decimals. I'm going to turn them all into decimal. First one I'm going to do is 3 tenths. This is 0 0.3 as a decimal. I've got a quarter as a fraction. This is a fraction that we should know as a decimal. It's not 0.25. 3 over 20 is a little bit more tricky, but I know 1 20th is 0 0.05 and 3 lots of that. So 3 20ths is 0 0.15. I'm then going to say, well, 0 0.3, is it less than 0 0.15? No. Is 0 0.3 less than 0 0.35? It is. So my answer there would be 0 0.35. Finally, for question one, I'm going to ask to work out 5 twelfths of 24. So a fraction of amount means we divide by the bottom and times by the top. So we take our 24 and we divide it by the bottom of our fraction, which is 12. 12 goes into 24 two times. I then take that 2 and I multiply it by the top of my fraction. And the top of my fraction is 5. And 2 times 5 gives me the answer 10. Some work, question 2. Some workers in a large shop are asked to choose which month they would like to take on holiday. So we have a line graph depicting this. And we also have a pictogram picked in this. Now neither of these graphs is complete but we do have enough information here to complete it ourselves. The key for this is June. June has been filled in in my pictogram and June has been filled in on my line graph. So on the line graph the June line goes up to 14. So I know these one, two, three complete boxes and half a box must add to 14. And if we think about this we can get that each box is 4, 4 and 4, which gives me 12, and half of a box is worth 2. That gives me my total of 14. So one full box represents 4 workers. This means we can now complete May, because that is 4, 4, and that is 3 quarters of the box. So 4, 4 and 3 means we would have 11 here. September, we would have 4 and 4, which means we would have 8. The height of July is 9, and the height of August would be 15. So for July, I'm going to have 4 and 4, which gives me 8, and then I need a quarter of a box to give me my 9. And for August, 4, 4, 4, and then the 3, similar to what we've got for May, and that gives me my 15. I also need to complete my line graph. So for May, it should go up to 11. So I'm going to go down from 11 here. And for September, Eight. So I'm going to go across from 8 and go down for my bar for September. Okay, so I've now got a completed line graph and a completed pictogram, making sure that I've filled in the key as well. Okay, how many shop workers were asked? So we need to tally up all of our workers. 
So we had 11 for May, 14 for June, 9 for July, 15 for August and 8 for September. And we get a total of 57. And write down the modal month. So modal is our mode. So which month had the most people? And that would be August. Question three. The shape is drawn on triangle dots. Complete the shape so it has rotational symmetry, order three. So rotational symmetry means if this was rotated round, it would look the same three times. So that gives me a big clue that it's going to be three prongs or three key sides to this. And if one's here and one's here, the last one is going to go here. And then I need to make sure that the triangle is pointing and facing the right direction there. The next shape is drawn on squared off paper. Complete the shape. So this L is our mirror line. So there's four on this side, there's four on this side, one there, one there. There's two on this side, so there must have to be two here. One there, one there, one there, one there, two there and two there. This one's got one on this side and three on that side. So I need to add another two boxes there and then this one's got one and none so I need to add that one there so in total I'm adding one two three four extra boxes to my diagram and it does say shade them in so I'll do that quickly okay we now have a tally chart Okay, so 50 students in a small school vote for their head boy and girl. Three candidates for the head girl were Abby, Bay, and Cherry. The frequency table shows a total of 30 votes. The remaining 20 students are here. So the tally's already been done for the first 30, and I'm going to continue that. So I'm going to cross Abby off and add another one for Abby, Bay, and add one. Cherry, add one, and B. Okay. B, add one fifth. Abby, Abby, Cherry, Abby, B, Abby, add one fifth. Abby, Cherry. That's the fifth, Abby, Bay, Cherry, Abby, Cherry, Abby. Right. Now that I've completed all of these, I can finish off with Abby has 5, 10, 15, and 4 gives me 19. Bay would get 5, 10, and 4 which would be 14, and Cherry gets 5, 10, 15, and then 2, which is 17. Okay, so which girl won the vote? Abby won the vote. Frequency change table shows the results of the head boy. What percentage of the 50 students voted for the winning boy? Okay, so the first thing, the winning boy is Eli with 20 votes and he got 20 out of 50. But we want a percent. Okay, a percent means out of 100. So we want our fraction to be out of 100. So to turn 50 into 100, I multiply by 2. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top. So 20 times 100 is 40. And 40 over 100 can be rewrote as 40%. Right. Question 5. The timetable shows some buses. So we've got a bus timetable here, the X1. It goes from Newland bus station at 8.10, St Mary's Hospital, 8.17, Highview Castle, 8.40, Whiteview Shopping Centre, 9.09, and Broadcare bus station, at 9.34 and then it repeats the journey for each of these times. 
Sid is meeting his friend at Whiteview Shopping Centre. So he's meeting his friend here. And he wants to get the centre for 1.30. So the latest bus he can get would be to get off here at 1.14. And then he'd wait 60 minutes for his friend. What is the late time of the latest bus he can take from Newland Bus Station? So from Newland Bus Station, which is this one, would be the 12. 15 bus. Pam takes the 840 bus from Highview Castle. So she's going to get the 840 from Highview Castle. To Broadcare bus station. The bus leaves Highview Castle on time but arrives at Broadcare bus station 15 minutes late. Okay, so 9.34 plus 15 minutes would be 9.49. So how long is the full journey? So we're starting at 8.40 and we're going to 9.49. Okay, so if we're thinking about time, time occurs in 60 minutes. So I'm going to jump and say from 8.40 to get to 9 o'clock, that's 20 minutes. And then from 9 o'clock to 9.49, that would be 49 minutes. Add those together and that would be 69 minutes for the full duration of the journey. Right, so that would complete questions 1, 2, 5.